Folks, what's up? It's Don and John's picks. That's goddamn right. We are having a great, great time. We just had a great week. John, how'd you do? Give me a quick recap. Donnie, the, the week went quite well. Uh, uh, other than the anchor pick, ended up with a push thanks to a bunch of missed kicks in the Packers game. Thank you, Crosby. Uh, we otherwise did quite well, especially on the spreads and all the primetime games. Over-under is a little shaky, but you know, we don't put as much stock in those. But we are hot on the spreads right now, Donnie. Oh, yes, that is true. We are so hot. We swept the primetime game spreads. Lost an over under to, you know, one of them, the Bills game. Garbage time TD, the defense played great. Whatever, that's, I can't be mad. That's, we told you last week, spreads, like John said, are bread and butter. Let's just lock the week. Man, I was confident. I even went in Sunday thinking, oh, okay, well, let's just lock the week. Yeah, I picked. Right, 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 right. Okay, I picked the Cardinals and the Chargers. Wait, no, wait. I, I picked the Broncos. I had to re rewatch the episode because the whole week had passed. My mind had changed. I'm like, Broncos, can I trust them? I think I can. You know, they they have a bounce back game. But I realized I love the Chargers spread so much more. I kind of combined them both in a personal bet. So I had a great, great weekend. Uh, Broncos, you let me down but at least Arizona came through. So one and one on the luscious lock, one, one and one on the luscious lock and the anchor pick. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had a great week for my personal props. Uh, little tidbit is every primetime game, you know, uh, I like to sprinkle a little bit, just a little bit on a ridiculous, you know, four or five team prop parlay. And John, I hit two out of three this week. Oh, geez. Two out of three plus 2,000 prop uh, tickets. Man, they cash. We'll put them right here. Added them in. Look at this beautiful ticket. Oh, yes. Maybe if uh, I get a more, more confident, I'll start giving those out. The problem is anytime I've given those out to my friends or other people, they always lose. When I always just move silently in the night, that's when I strike. So we'll see what happens with that. But... Without further ado, let's get to this week, week six, Thursday night football. We got a familiar face. This team's already played Thursday night once. Don't know what I'm talking about. It's the Bucks. They open it up at home. This time they're on the road in Philly. The famous Philly fans. Are they gonna throw batteries at Tom Brady? Who knows? What are the <laughs> Philly fans gonna do this time? We'll see. Spreads at minus seven for Tampa Bay, plus seven for the home uh home dogs home eagles eagle dogs eagle dogs yes and the over under is 52 and a half john where are you sitting on this one well donnie i think uh tom brady is i mean he's coming off a huge game last week a career game for a man in his 40s career game for anybody any age for that matter the man is hot and they're going into Philly, hostile environment. Philly is, they're looking, they're looking a little better than we might have thought this season. Uh, but I still think they're no match for Tom Brady here in the Bucks. The spread minus seven, pretty big. But I still just, I don't see myself taking Philadelphia here, even with all those points. So I'm back in Tom Brady and the Bucks, minus seven, with the over under at 52 and a half. I think that bar is set pretty high. I think they'll get close to it, but I am going to stick with the under here, Donnie. Under 52 and a half. Give me Tom Brady, and we'll hopefully be starting off this week on Thursday night with some solid cash in our pockets. What are you back in here? You, you, are you with me? You, you, are we split, or are we in consensus to start the week? Well, John, I think we're going to be on opposite sides for this one on both respects. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a hard one. I don't, I don't like this game. Um, I don't like this game for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, Tampa hasn't covered in a single primetime game yet. They're on two. They didn't cover uh, against Dallas. Didn't cover against the uh, big hyped up Tom Brady return to New England. That was a snooze fest. 
Um, I think they win this, but Philly, they're building momentum. They are building momentum. I, uh, you know, we, we actually were at a wedding, stayed overnight. We're leaving Sunday morning. I was checking out lines. We're in the hotel room. And John might even overheard me say, man, I want to take the Panthers and hammer it, but uh, I can't do that. And then I'm driving home. I look, Panthers are up by like, you know, 10, 17. I'm like, oh man, I should have hammered spread on the Panthers. It's easy. And Philly ends up taking it against the Panthers who have a good D. Like, so is Philly back? Are they gaining steam? I think so. I think I'm going to go with the hot hand. Philly just faced a pretty good defense, supposedly. In the Panthers, uh, the Bucks, they just played Miami, which was a cakewalk. So I'm gonna go with the team that has most recently had the harder struggle. Um, also, you know, injury-wise, Tampa Bay still doesn't have Gronk. And uh, I think they're gonna need that against a tough defensive front that Philly has. Give me Philly plus seven, over under, uh, man, this is just a fuck it play right here. Like, I bet so many unders. I bet, I think, like, 60, 70% unders so far, and they, I, anytime I bet an under, it's just, it's sucks and sucks and sucks. So, I'm gonna bet the over. I think Tampa Bay puts up a bunch of points. I'm, I'm seeing, really, like, Tampa Bay easily covering, and then, like, a crazy backdoor cover happen for Philly. Mm -hmm. Like where Tampa's, you know, up 10 or 17 in the fourth quarter and they kind of just lie down. Mm -hmm. Hertz does what the Hertz does and covers it back door. So give me the over, give me Philly with the points. And with that, that is a DJ split. <laughs> We're split. We're split. Splitsville America is us on Thursday night, folks. You've seen it, mm -hmm. and we will find out which one of us is gonna be frowning going into Sunday night action. Hopefully, well, we'll see. Moving right along now here, we have, well, I guess the Bills are playing on primetime again, aren't they, Donnie? So we are gonna skip right to Sunday night football. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, indeed. We're looking at the Russell Wilson list. Seahawks uh, heading to Pittsburgh. We have Pittsburgh at minus five, over under set at 42 and a half. We all have indeed heard Russell Wilson and saw his totally messed up yeah. bingy. It was like like this thing, but like totally like just broken. Like, yeah. Didn't look right. Something about it just didn't look right. Turns out. This is Russell Wilson's finger. Whoa. Whoa. That's right. Yeah, it just became completely separated at the bone. Hopefully, uh, I don't know what the doctors are prescribing for that. Maybe Sierra can just kind of like, I don't know. She can like suck on his finger or something. Maybe, maybe that'll help. Maybe yeah. she has some magical powers. What's a, what's a hit song from Sierra? Like it. It's been so long. I just keep thinking Shakira, Shakira, but that's not that's Sierra. The one. That's Shakira. <laughs> it's Pitched Shakira. Alive. Shakira by Sierra uh, from her Sierra, debut Sierra. album, Hips Don't Lie. Yeah, so hopefully they can get some of that magic I mean, going. In the, I wouldn't make. I wouldn't be bothered. And make if I was her, I'm like, yeah, who cares? Pop career's over. I'm just gonna hang out, watch mm -hmm. football. That's what I'd do. I'd quit music tomorrow if I had the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think Sierra's still she's still hoping for one more uh, one more ring for, out of her man's before he he moves on in in life. So, hoping he can nurse or she can nurse him back to health sooner than later. Because at the moment, the Seattle Seahawks, from what I hear, are looking at Geno Smith uh, under center here, at least for the time being. I've heard rumblings of uh, none other than Blake Bortles heading up to Seattle to do some working out if uh, Russell was going to be out. So we could see uh, our boy Bor Bortles making an appearance up in the Pacific Northwest, which would be exciting for sure. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Um, usually just piss. OK. Uh, <laughs> what would you do if you weren't playing football? If I wasn't playing football, um, working construction, ripping cigs. 
Have they, have they named Geno Smith as QB1, like, for sure? Or is it just, like, everyone's assuming? I I don't know if it's official. I did hear but Blake I, Bortles were there. I, I know Bortles is working out, but at this point, I mean, I don't know if they could get him up to speed by this week. I definitely think that by next week, though, especially depending on how Geno Smith is looking on Sunday night, they might be looking for the Blake Bortles show come, come next weekend. So we will have to keep an eye on that. But at the moment, I know that I am assuming Geno Smith show is uh, making his debut in the Seahawks uniform in Pittsburgh. Who the hell knows how that's going to go? Uh, I mean, the spread here, minus five. Pittsburgh's at home. Pittsburgh's been looking okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, if Geno Smith, I just, I don't remember. It's been a minute. It's been a minute on Geno Smith, but I think that I personally am back in uh, Ben Roethlisberger and fam here at home, even with the minus five. I still don't, I don't know. There's a lot of question marks here, but the Seahawks, even with Russell Wilson, still weren't, they weren't, they, they were struggling a bit. They've been, it's been, it's been an up and down season for the Seahawks. And uh, the over under here, 42 and a half, quite low, quite low indeed. I I mean, I yeah, I can see the tendency of people thinking this is going to be a low-scoring game here, but something about it, I'm just I'm feeling some fluky points, so I'm taking the over here. So give me, give me Pittsburgh minus five Sunday night, and the over 42 and a half. Donnie, what are you thinking here? John, just like you, I'm pretty confused. These are two confusing teams, hard to get a read on. Seattle, they are a lightning in a bottle team. One night they look like they can win the Super Bowl. One, they have Russell Wilson. The next night they look incapable of winning their division. Um, I, yeah, they they were like that last year. They were like that this year. I think if you remember, they were my luscious lock of the week of uh, of the week week one, and I haven't touched them since. Not kidding. I haven't touched any game they've been on either side since. And that's in this show or personally. They are such a wild card. They're like Charlie and Always Sunny just cutting the brakes, but sometimes and jumping out of the car and blowing up a car full of gas. Guys, why aren't the brakes working? Because I cut the brakes! Wild card, bitches! Yeah! What? 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 But then they're also like Charlie, sometimes doing good deeds, sometimes being lovable and, and winning games. Um, I will say this about Seattle. Gino, uh, is the, I think the first drive of the field he hit versus the Rams, he just went right down and scored a touchdown. Uh, he, and I think he did throw at least two touchdown passes when he played. Now, granted, one of those was to Megatron. That's Everyone's it. been calling him Megatron, OG. too. So. Uh, I, I would say Megatron Jr., but I don't think he'd like that. And he's definitely bigger than me, both height and weight. So Megatron 2, you know, I, they still have him. Pittsburgh, uh, I'm, I, I, you know, I hate to be, you know, Mr. Sour Grapes over here mentioning the Broncos again. But the Broncos almost came back and stole that one in the fourth quarter. They didn't play at all well till the fourth quarter they pretty much played one quarter of bronco football and still almost stole it uh pittsburgh i just i can't put my money on them especially anyone that knows me and what happened week one with the bills and broncos and how many parlays i had built up from like june to like all summer for the bills to cover i just i can't you know this might be I say never bet with emotion, always bet with your wallet and your rational mind. I might be falling victim to betting with emotion a little bit, but I just can't see the Steelers beating Seattle by more than five points, even at home. Give me Seattle. Give me the over two. 42 and a half is just too low. Uh, Steelers put up points last week against the Broncos. We thought their defense was capable. Apparently not. Seattle's defense still trash. I'm sure Pittsburgh gets something on them. Uh, I just have a hard time seeing that they win.
by more than five points. So that's two dogs in a row I'm going with. I, I've been chalky lately, but two dogs in a row. So, John, I think that's that's a halfy again, right? Mm-hmm. On the spread, it's a DJ split. And on the over-under, we're both on over, so it's a consensus, consensus pick. All right, hopefully we at least cash that over-under, because geez, 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 geez. Over-unders are due for a, uh, you know. They need a face Yeah. All right, well, let me grab my beer for this one. Let me take a sip, and just the first thing that comes out of my mouth, I'm gonna. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, whoa, oh, right. That's <laughs> right. Monday night football. Bills. Two weeks in a row, we got prime time and Bills picks as one. We're killing two birds with one stone. Bills are on the road again, Monday night. And if you've watched this show, you know I keep saying Monday night is like my favorite night of football. It really is. It's just such an uplift after just a whack day in general normally. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to end it. And it's relaxing, you know. Lots of times Sunday, you know, especially Sunday night, there's parties to go to. Monday, it's acceptable to be like, hey, bros, uh, not making out tonight. Just going to make a dank dinner, drink a couple beers, and, you know, smoke a couple spliffs and hang out on my couch. And sometimes that's what you need on a Monday. Not this Monday, though, because the Bills are playing. We're hanging out with the bros. We're hanging out with the sisters. We're hanging out with the Bills Mafia. Bills going in to Tennessee. This is like the ultimate revenge game. We got revenge on last year. We got revenge on the 2000 forward lateral. Mm. I love it. Bills are sitting at minus five and a half. Interesting fact, spread opened at three. Or three and a half some books. Within two days, not even 48 hours, it's already been bet up to minus five and a half. By the time this airs, it might be up to seven and a half or more. Bills are favorited though. Mm -hmm. Over under, 54 points. John, where are you at with this? Well, Donnie, yeah, I heard you mention the hometown throwback. I mean, I think it's like a lock that that is at least brought up one time, probably with the highlight reel of the hometown throwback from 1999, Rob Johnson, shout out. But I would, I'm wondering. That's what started the foodie curse. That's right. Not everyone knows this, but inside elite Bill's Mafia circles, it's not known as the drought. It's known as the foodie curse. The foodie curse. It was the foodie curse. Which thank you to Tyrod Taylor for, you know, ending the foodie Stamping. curse. AKA the drought. Because we had another mobile QB. And what mm -hmm. do we have now? Mobile. Foodie was mobile too. Don't let anyone tell you differently. He might've been like 5'5", five, five, but he could run. Just little quick boy, little quick boy. I'm set. I'm setting the over under on number of times hometown throwback is mentioned on the broadcast at probably one and a half. I would say. So just keep an eye out for lines on that. But I think that's what will be set at. At the moment, we're keeping it with the the the, the actual spread and the over under here. The Bills obviously coming off a massive win over the hated Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes. Looked like he was about to cry on the sideline. Travis Kelsey getting a stinger. All woozy on the sideline. Also looking like he was about to cry. And I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was great. It felt real good. Just beating them in their own house, in the rain. So the Bills are hot right now. We got the best offense in the league. We got the best defense in the league. Going into Tennessee, where we've done pretty well in recent history. Last year, I feel like was somewhat of an anomaly of an otherwise great season. And I think we ride this, this momentum coming off a big win last week against KC right through Nashville. Five and a half points does not have me concerned here. I think the Bills handle the Tennessee Titans by at least a touchdown. That over under obviously set pretty high at 54. I think the Bills put up plenty of points. The defense is hot. I mean, you never know. You can see another pick six or something like that from Micah Hyde, that'd be great. But I do think that the Tennessee Titans will find a way to to put up some points against the Bills here. I mean, they still have Derrick Henry. They're just running that man into the ground. And so he's bound to find the end zone, I would think, you know, once or twice on Monday night. So I, I think I'm taking the over here, Donnie. 
We're taking the Bills minus five and a half, taking the over 54 and a half. That's gonna be the Monday night action that I am backing. Where you at with this one, Donnie? Hey, hey. Yep, I love it both ways. Um, Bills, I mean, I was texting our group chat like Monday morning when the line came out and I saw it was at, it had already gone up from three to four and a half. I'm like, I'm hammering this, I'm doing it. And you know, I slept a little bit and now it's up to five and a half, but you know what? That point doesn't matter. Bills are winning by a touchdown. I'm tempted to even just say, fuck it, minus nine and a half. I'm not convinced Tennessee's defense is really that great. This is a team that's, you know, their defense looks better than it, its talent because of its coaching. They have great coaching. I'll give that to them. Brable, big fan. Like you a lot. I'm, I've, you know, Titans, I bet on you last week. You're what you're in my pool of reliable teams to bet on a lot of the time. But uh, no, Bills minus five and a half is easy. Uh, whatever the line is at minus nine and a half, boom, lock that in. Because much like last week when I picked dog uh bills as plus 130 dogs and i said i'm not just taking the spread i'm taking the money line i'm taking the alternate line better value minus nine and a half bills buy it win by at least 10. over under it's got to be over i think derrick henry you know he's gonna get one or two touchdowns at least that might be it um titans still have their main wide receivers injured right they are banged up. I think they had A.J. Brown on a snap count last week. We would probably look at him being back to more full speed this week, but they just had a hard time utilizing either of these guys. So the, really the whole offense is still going through Derrick Henry. Yeah, I mean, A.J. Brown not at full strength is nothing to get worried about when you just beat a team that had Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. So I'm not worried about uh, the passing game at all. Although, you know, I will say Tannehill respect, you know, I, you won me over in thinking that you're a quality NFL QB, but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, we haven't really seen what the Bills run defense is like yet based on the teams they've played. They did well against the Steelers who are a running team, but I don't, you know, Najee Harris didn't get that many touches that game, and he they were still figuring out first game of the season. Uh, I think Derrick Henry at least can score two touchdowns. I see just like Kansas City, another garbage touchdown coming. We might even be up so much that, you know, fourth quarter we put Trubisky in. It might be one of those games. Mm -hmm. So uh, give me Bills minus five and a half. Give me Bills minus nine and a half and give me the over at 54. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, and on the bills, we are in consensus pick. Oh, it feels so good being in consensus land. And before we move on to the luscious walk to the anchor pick, I wanna make a special announcement. John and I just decided we're gonna do a special edition live Don and John's picks before the Bills game. It's probably going to be around five, six o'clock between that window, just when you get out of work. We're going to do it with plenty of time for you get to get down to the creek, but we're going to be talking props for the Bills game. You already have our, our lines. Props normally don't come out till day of or day before. So we're going to be talking touchdown props, passing props, receiving props, rushing props. Uh, you know, any, any alternate spreads, alternate over-unders, we're going to do our homework. We're going to have a nice little short show for you, and uh, that'll be great. So tune in Monday about 5, 6 o'clock. Uh, you know, stay tuned. We're going to announce that for sure, and it's going to be dope. So That's right. Be sure to tune in for the very special first time ever live stream, live feed of us here at Donna John's Picks for the Monday night lineup god damn right maybe we'll have special guests too special guests question mark train wreck special guests maybe uncle paulie from last year mm -hmm. maybe prison tony who y'all don't know yet maybe con man connor 
I don't know. He might not like that nickname. I just came up with it. But we'll see. We're going to have to find out. He was supposed to be here tonight, so that's what I'm calling him right now. Con Man Connor, we're calling you out, buddy. Get your picks ready, because <laughs> you're up, bud. You're up. Batter, you yeah. All right. Okay. Well, shall we move on to the final? I think we should. We're going we gonna to stick with the order or reshuffle it? I think it might be time to reshuffle back to our original order, which would have us looking, Donnie, to Luscious Land, okay. Luscious Boy, Luscious Locks. Here we go. You know, folks, there's, there's talk. I've heard whisperings on Twitter, in the message boards, on Reddit, that maybe one day soon, the Luscious Locks might be getting a little bit of a revamp, a little bit of a freshening up. Uh, do you care to speak to that at all, Donnie? Bills win the Super Bowl? Yeah. John can cut it. Okay. You heard that, folks. That's, on tape. This is big. Bills win the Super Bowl, John can cut it. Unless, actually, there's, I might get a cut before then. So, it's, uh, if I do, I don't know, John can still cut a piece of my hair off if they win the Super Bowl, I guess, even if I do get it cut. But, uh, absolutely. Okay. Yes, here we go. All right. Well, what, let me just get them out a little bit. You know, they they've had a long day. It's been it's been sweaty in Buffalo. It's not been the normal October fall that we're all used to, which I'm thankful for. Also, fall fans, um, you might have been noticing the last couple of years this uh, this like sweatshirt and hoodie and apple picking weather is uh, is uh, not what it used to be. Yeah, that's called climate change. It's mm. uh, it's 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 shrinking. Fall's gonna be shrinking, spring's gonna be shrinking. It's what we're looking at in our climate, but hang tight and we'll all get through it together. But in about a couple years, we're probably gonna have like a week of fall. It'll be like 70 degrees and then a week will pass and then we'll have drastically different weather and it'll start snowing. But it's okay because these picks are gonna get us to a whole new secure world where we're all safe and is baking in the sun and in money. All right, the luscious lock. It spoke to me. It said, you know, last week, halfway through the week, after giving out my pick, I had second thoughts and I was selfish. I didn't give out my second thoughts. I didn't follow up. I just said, okay, you know, I gave out. Arizona, I know they'll win, and they did. And you know, Broncos, I'm, I'm having second thoughts about, but we're still, you know, we're sending it. But I really like the Chargers. Well, I'm not being selfish this week. Chargers are the real deal. Herbert's the real deal. Dude's on my fantasy team. He's put up 52 points. Absolutely incredible. I actually just took on John this week. I was like 100 points up going into Monday. And he, he made it close. He brought, because uh, you because you know who else put up 50 points in fantasy? John's QB. Lamar Jackson. That guy. Well, guess what? We got those two fantasy monsters head in head to head. Herbert and Lamar. I'm sorry, I'm still not a Lamar fan. If you remember uh, last week, I was like, oh, you know, you know, bet on the Colts. Like, Lamar, he's so inconsistent. It'll look like an MVP. And then another time, he'll do what Wentz does and throw it three feet over receivers' heads. First half, he did exactly that. Second half, there's a second string defense. Lamar got it going. I think the Chargers D is tougher than that. I think they can shut them down. And I think Herbert's the real deal. Chargers being dogs in Baltimore is an absolute disgrace. Take the Chargers plus three, but really, this isn't a sprinkle. This isn't a sprinkle. Hammer the money line. It's at plus 130 for the Chargers. Hammer it, take the spread. If you know you're a little, little baby, you're gonna need the three points, but fuck the three points. I'm betting on it just to double up as a security, but hammer, hammer, hammer the money line of the Chargers and you will afford all kinds of luscious wigs and luscious hair like this. And if you want to buy my hair, you know, you might be able to afford it if you put enough on the charges and win, so. Okay. What do you think about that, John? 
It's sounding pretty luscious, Donnie. I think if the viewers know what's best for them, they'll get down on these luscious, 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 luscious picks. You see, we switched the order here, folks. We got, you know, it's 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 bound to bounce back. We're coming off a bit of a slow week on the, the anchor luscious picks from last week, but I, I got a good feeling about that one here, Donnie. Me too, me too. Well, folks, we have now come to the final pick of the episode. Everybody's favorite pick of the week. That's right. What is that sound? What is that sound? That is the sound of the anchor. The anchor's away. Anchor's away indeed, Donnie. We're pulling that anchor right up right now. And you know where we are right now? We're in the Gulf of Mexico. That's right. I'm, you know, I, I had a pretty good week last week. I'm enjoying some of the winnings down south, down in the sunshine Gulf of Mexico. And you know what I found when I just lifted that anchor? Your boy, Jerry Jones, was hanging at the bottom of the oh. sea with a nice, tasty pick for us. That's right. Jerry Jones. <laughs> he was dabbing all the way back up from the bottom of the sea up into the deck of the boat that we are now on. And Jerry, he's he's here to tell us. He says, you know what, John? You know what, Don? We're going to New England. And we're going to stomp the Patriots. We're going to stomp Bill Belichick, that ugly, frumpy man, and this little dude they got, Mac Jones, with the nice little Pillsbury Doughboy belly. They're going to stomp him. We got the Dallas Cowboys going into New England. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys only given minus three and a half here. I mean, how could you not love this pick, Donnie? It's, I'm finally coming around to the Dallas Cowboys. I, you know, it took me a minute. I still don't like him. Something about Jerry Jones, though, man. When he just comes up from the bottom of the sea with a smile on his face and he's dabbing away, it's it's just so hard not to bat him. It's so hard not to back him. So that's exactly what we're going to do here, folks. That's right. Anchor pick of the week. We're taking the Dallas Cowboys. Minus three and a half at New England. Lock that baby in. And uh, we can all thank Jerry Jones for this nice paycheck at the end of the week here. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Let's go. The fade, the Cowboys tour stops here. They are no longer my boys. Now they are also John's boys. Let's go. I love it. Man, last week, this was me like trying to not bet the Cowboys the whole time. Like insert that poppin'. meme of like. Veins popping. And I didn't. Uh, I stayed strong, like I said, and I should have. They fucking covered seven points easy. Cover it was machine. A massacre. It was a massacre. I think they're undefeated against the spread. Still, they're like five. They might be four and one, but they're five and zero oh against the spread. I love it. Yeah, it's gonna be great. You can watch New England lose and then just put some money in your pocket. We call that a win-win, folks. I I love it. I'm taking Dallas too. Add it. Add it. We're riding. It feels great, John. It feels great. It feels great. The vibe is high going into week six here, folks. We couldn't feel better. We hope you're here backing us. And we certainly look forward to the special live streamed. We got some prop picks coming for you. Monday, right after work, leading up to the Monday night Bills Titans showdown. So we hope to see you then. We'll give a quick shout out also. We playing a band, Intrepid Travelers. We're playing Halloween night at Buffalo Ironworks right after we squish the fish. That's right, Bill's Game, Intrepid Travelers, perfect Halloween uh, weekend for you. So we hope you can join us there. But until then, we'll see you Monday for the special edition of Don and John's Picks. That's right, folks, this train never stops. Whew. Hopefully I'm wearing the suit next week. Yeah, I hopefully we'll bring back the suit as well and the one.